Welcome everybody out there in the internet to episode 101. That's right, 101 episodes wow. of Sis and Big Pops Culture. As always, I am Todd Turner, Mosaic Fan Art. For the last 101 episodes, you all know who my cohort in crime is. Hi, Hello. friends. Cohort, cohort. perhaps. Um, cohort came regardless, from. I'm Hannah Jo, um, a.k.a. Sis, and together we are an adult daughter and father duo. We dive into all things geek, nerd, and fandom. Every episode is family-friendly. Family friendly. Indeed. Listen, all I can think of on 101 is the room in 1984, which is where all your mm-hmm. deepest fears were supposed to happen. Trevin is reading <clears throat> that book for I the know. first time. You told me. I read 1984. In, in 1984. 1984. I know. And it was funny because um, I had a couple teachers that were just amazing teachers. Yes. And this was you a teacher. You said stories. Um, Otto Emil Hines, he's no longer living. But didn't he almost go up in the Challenger? No, no, no. That was our that was our band, band director, Ted Williams, also a great one. Um, but we called uh, Otto Emil Hines his room. We called it one o room one o one. So I bet yeah. he love hated that. I if he did, he never told anybody. Yeah, so I anyway, he seemed like a very stu- like a straight laced. Uh, he was awesome. I always Dude. said he looked like the Grinch in Mr. Rogers' clothing. Heck anyway. Yeah. So, Hannah, tell everybody what we do here. Hi, sweet friends. Well, today, as per the usual, we're going to start off with some nerd news. We're going to chat about what we've been binging. Dad's going to share his pull list. And then we're going to review the image comic. Image, yes? Image, yep. Okay, good. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I didn't even ask. I just typed it in. Um, the image comic, 8 Billion Genies. A Billion Genies. Which was Oof. excellent. Yeah, by Charles Soleil and Ryan Brown. And I contacted uh, Charles Soleil, <laughs> and um, he didn't, didn't say anything. Anywho, You're but we're funny. trying. Yeah. One day, someone will say yes. One day more. What's that from? Lame is. One day more till revolution. Oh, <gasps> this is news. Get, let's just get into it. <gasps> okay, yeah. <laughs> Nerd news to us, 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 us. <laughs> Hannah, did you hear about the Mattel having to recall the... Oh, the uh, Wicked Dolls? Yes. Yeah. Okay, shoot. I didn't know if you knew it. Do you know why? Yeah. So Say instead it. of instead of them going to... It's supposed to go to the thewickedmovie.com. They had them going to a... Not safe for work website dot com, which we won't say because we're family. Whoever's friendly. job it was to check the copy on that is fired. It's crazy, isn't it? I'm on, like honestly, there was an Instagram video that I saw, and it was like, um, "Do we think that this was an accident?" Um, I would say I would hope so. I would hope so. Yeah. Recall um, here's, the dolls. Here's something I didn't know. Um, do you know where the name Elphaba comes from? I also watched a video about this this oh, morning. Oh, got it. What the flip? <laughs> well, tell, tell, me, tell me anyway. Tell me anyway. No, you, you go. No, away. you say it. I don't remember. I don't remember the uh, person's name. The guy who wrote the book, The Wizard of Oz, Frank Baum, mm-hmm. his first initial is L and an FB, LFB, Elphaba. The guy who created Wicked, decided that if he was going to use somebody's characters, he would at least pay homage to the character by creating the name Elphaba, which is Frank Baum's initials. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you go. That was it. All right. Tell me something I don't know. Tell me, tell me, tell me something I don't know. What the heck's that from? It's from Camp Rock. You're welcome. Oh, my gosh. Wait, I liked Camp Rock, though. How many inches in a mile what it takes to make you smile? 5,280 times 12. 
I don't so know. You don't know do either. <laughs> oh, I can. I can do the math. Give me a that second. That says, give me a moment. It'll take a minute. Um, I, I'm not going to do it right now. Okay. Denzel Washington. Oh, I knew this one too. <laughs> We've gotten to the point where the news that we share is just but, stuff we haven't talked about yet. Did, okay. Just tell everybody. Then, uh, Vin Diesel, LOL, not at all the same person. Which, by the way, Vin Diesel lost the uh, Sexiest Bald Man Alive contest to uh, Prince Harry. Is he the one that doesn't have any hair? No, no, no. Prince William. Anywho, go ahead. This doesn't have anything to do with Vin Diesel. Denzel Washington is set to star on Black Panther 3. Do you know how that came about? Not at all. So he was on the... um, the Today Show in Australia. So apparently Australia, of course, everybody's got their own shows, right? Yeah. And he was talking about retiring. Like, I'm only going to do a few, you know, a few movies. Heck, I, I, so I have to be picky. And then he started naming what he was doing. And then he said, and Ryan Coogler's got a part for me in Black Panther. And then after that, I'm going to do King Lear. And then after that, he just slid it out there. I guarantee you. He didn't. He got a phone call from Kevin Feige. I bet. I don't think he was supposed to let that out because after he did, he went like this, like peace out or whatever. He, he that's hysterical. I really, Trevin and I watched um, Equalizer 1, Equalizer 2. Do you like them? In preparation for Equalizer 3, which we were going to see in theaters and then didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. But they were really good. Um, I've Honestly, never seen they them. were very good. You I would... watched eight million clips of the third one, though. Oh yeah, same. I've watched literally so many clips of the third one. I probably know the movie. Yeah, honestly. So, but yeah, the... I would love it. It was so good. It was so good. It was giving red, but like gorier. Did you notice? It was like the, red the... John Wick is what it was. Did, did you see the? Uh, Denzel Washington uh, uh, nod in the comic book we read? No. Somebody's watching a book of Eli in the comic oh, book we read. Oh, that's Any, sweet. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, that's okay. apropos. I know. And that, yes. Isn't that funny? That is apropos. <laughs> we'll get to it. We'll get okay. to it. All right. Um, what else you got? Um, did you watch the first teaser trailer for the last Mission Impossible movie? I did. I did it because I knew you would want to talk about because it. Because I loved them. I know. That's funny. Give so this me is the one remember we talked about movie. We talked about the we talked about this in the news a while ago about how one of the stunts involving a, the submarine mm-hmm. was cost them like twenty million dollars over budget. Um and you saw the sub in it yeah. in the teaser trailer. It looks He's good. It's like underwater the entire time. That looks good. I'm for it. I love the, I love those movies though. But you know who I didn't see in it? Benji. Well, something happened to him in the last one. Did you watch the last one? What happened? Did he die? No, I'm not going to tell you. I did watch it. Um, No, I did. Maybe I didn't. It has Haley Atwell in it. I don't remember. They all all just kind (laughs) of... Okay. I'll have to go back. They all kind of merge together in the weird... I'm sure it's on something somewhere where I can watch it. Um, But... I am going to watch it. We'll probably go watch it in IMAX. Trevin, for some reason, re- I know for some reason, as if I don't know why, um, really enjoys um, watching Tom Cruise. Why do you think Trevin enjoys watching Tom Cruise, yeah, Dad? Maverick. Just Maverick. <laughs> he just likes stupid Top Gun, which was good. I didn't mean stupid. I liked it. Maverick was but excellent. It was good. I it was agree. a very good sequel. Um, yeah. But... We'll probably go see that in IMAX in May. Well, depends it'll on be, when it comes it'll out. Be a, it'll be a fun movie. I should walk in May. Oh, yeah. Well, I hope you can walk now. I can. I don't know that it would be a no, it's walk means. That oh, means sorry. Graduate. I'm, yeah, I'm graduating, hopefully, with my doctorate, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise, there May 9th. May 9th. Woo. We need to take some, make some days. Oh, I won't be able to be there. I've got something going on. i got to get my hair done. Oh, perfect. Well, Get my you. nails trimmed. Get my nails trimmed. That sounds you go nasty. To a specific place it's to get gross. your nails trimmed. Um, Ew. So, did you see that there's like D23 in Brazil going on? No, good for Brazil. So, there's like clips of stuff dropping left and right. That's so funny. Did you see any of that st- no. information on that? So, you didn't see the trailer for Winter Soldier? 
the not Winter Soldier. It looks like Winter Soldier. It feels like Winter Soldier. It Captain is America: Winter Brave Soldier. New World. Yeah, where they like actually show Red Hulk. Yes. Mm-hmm. And there's a Thunderbolts uh, thing coming out, and they also had a little teaser about Tron Three. What? I didn't even know there was one. Jared Leto is in it. There was another movie that's coming out soon that I'm like, that movie's coming out soon? Isn't that crazy? Oh. All these, Whoopi what? Goldberg, the oh, yeah, Sister, Sister Act, Act 3. three. Yeah, like, but now, a, the, yeah because now the Maggie Smith passed. Maggie Smith passed. Most people know her from uh, Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. Also, she was the uh, Wendy in Hook with mm-hmm. Robin Williams. Mm-hmm. Wendy I Darling. That movie. Yeah. So, yeah, so they said they had to rewrite or do something yeah, so like that. Yeah, so all these movies know. that I didn't know they were making. I didn't either. I, didn't I had no clue that was even in the, in the... In Bridget Jones' Diary 4? We don't need another Bridget Jones's Diary. Let her funny. diary be alone. It looks funny. Well, that's because she's funny. Yeah, Renee Zellweger. She's Renee just Zellweger. a funny girl. I never saw any of them. Did you ever see any of them? I watched the one with Hugh Grant... He's and in all of them, I think. I, and the Colin guy, who's not Colin. I Kirk. think he's in all of them too. Oh, <laughs> so that was King's Speech, Colin. Laugh. King's King's. King, you sound like Woody Woodpecker. Sound like Woody Woodpecker. He's Colin uh, from uh, not Farrell? Water Girl. Colin Firth. No, it's Colin Firth. Yeah, he was in the that movie with the. Uh, the girl, girl that went wants. crazy. Yeah, what a girl wants. Yeah. What a girl wants. What a yeah. girl wants. Amanda, needs. Amanda, please. She was in that movie. What's, how many songs can I sing to you today? He's also in the um, Kingsman movies. Yes, excellent. Yes, very good. Um, John Malkovich's character in the Fantastic Four movie has been... <gasps> I saw that, but I didn't write it down because I knew you'd tell me. The, they think it rumored, but I've seen a couple reliable places now say it. He is going to be the Red Ghost. Don't know who that is, do you? Nope. So when this came out, when this comic came out, I do have the first appearance of the Red Ghost, by the way. Yeah, you do. <clears throat> um, the Red Ghost was a Soviet scientist who would, wanted to basically beat the Fantastic Four into space. It was a big space race thing like we actually Mm. had with the Soviets. And him and like three, you know, they used to send like chimps up into space and stuff like that. They all are bombarded with cosmic rays, him and like three, three apes. So he now became, can become an immaterial and like phase through things and disappear. And he can control the Apes. apes and they basically are his, I was going to say, and he speaks yeah. to apes. He doesn't speak to apes, to these apes. These um, three specific apes, he speaks which to is a, Which is all right, I guess. Um, I could see John Malkovich doing that talk like this, you know? Like the guy off of Rounders. Did you ever see that movie? No. The poker movie? Great movie. Yeah. I watched um, Molly's Game. That's a poker movie. No clue what that is. Yeah. Would you say? No, that was it. Okay. What? Um, no, that was it. That's all I had on that. Um, what else did I have here? I had oh. a piece. Oh. No, you go ahead. Okay. I don't know how I feel about this. So I'm just going to state that I don't know how I feel about it and tell you about the news. Okay. Have you seen Paramount Plus's new Disney movie? Disney movie. Paramount Plus's new Christmas movie featuring Jack Black. S- Santa Claus. But it's Satan Claus. But it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't say that in the name. It's called this. Well, Santa. he writes. Yes. So the kid, little, the kid is, but, J, but little Jimmy's a terrible speller. <laughs> Instead of Santa Claus, it says wrote, Satan Claus wrote, to the dear, North Lope. Did you see that? North Lope. I'm going to admit that I have watched this trailer three times. Um, it's by the reason that I'm like, oh no. It Why? is by the people that did Dumb and Dumber. I know. The Farley Brothers? Is that who they did? Mm-hmm. So it, I don't know how I feel about it either. Yeah. So Jack Black is not Satan. He's like a demon, I think. Um, and it looks 
funny, but I feel yeah that dirty watching it. Yeah. Um, but I think the boy is so genuinely like lonely, like he's ir- ir- corrupt, uncorruptible. Aw, that he's just Feels not that getting it. Aw, yeah. that'd be no, cute. no, no. And then like Jack, because at one point Jack Black's like, I can't get, I can't break this kid. You know, cute. Um, I won't go watch it. I mean, it's on Paramount Plus. So if you don't have Paramount Plus, you can't watch it. Oh well, then I might watch it, Dad. Well, well, I have some. I mean, it's free for yeah. me, so I mean, yeah. <laughs> so. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know how I feel about it. I love a Christmas movie. I think Jack Black is funny. I think a kid misspelling Santa for Satan is his, that's a hysterical concept. Yes. That's just very, and you know that that happens. Absolutely. You can't convince me it doesn't happen year, like yearly. Mm-hmm. But someone's well, I mean, writing, they both are in red. I like, it's just, that's a funny concept. I don't know how I, know. I feel about it, it. That's all. I agree. I don't either. I haven't figured it out yet. You know, but Jack Black seems funny in it. But mm-hmm. should I be laughing at something like that? I don't know. Anyway, I don't know. Here's something that's real. Yes. 18 monkeys escaped from a scientific, a science lab. You're lying. 18 ex- no, 100% in South Carolina. So far, they've recovered five. So there are 13 experimental monkeys still on the loose in South Carolina. What are they doing to the monkeys? Huh? What are they doing to the monkeys? I don't know, but I'm automatically thinking it's, we're, it's zombies. It's zombie monkeys. on the planet of the apes. Oh, no. I mean, what are we doing? There's literally experimental ninja monkeys out there. On the loose. Ninja monkeys on the loose, ladies and I don't gentlemen. Know if ninja monkeys. Wait, isn't there like a, there is a game thing called Teenage ninja monkeys. Mutant Ninja Monkeys. Oh, my gosh. But that's for reals. Can you imagine living in South Carolina going, I wonder what kind of experiments they were doing on these monkeys. (laughs) Chalk the monkey. All right. I had one more piece of news. Okay, I have one more piece of real life news, too. Okay, go ahead. Tell me. Okay. For all of my girly pops who listen to this podcast, who are obsessed with Pookie and Jet, Pookie and Jet um, are real people. I don't even know what that means. A Pookie is what this man names this man named Jet calls his wife. They are obscenely okay. rich. Okay, and is this they, a TikTok thing? Yes. Oh my gosh! And Anna. an Instagram thing. I follow them on Instagram. They are um, literally so cute. I thought they gracious, were so cringe, and I hated it. And Jet says, like Jet just loves his wife so much, and they're just so tender with each other. It's just, it's honestly so beautiful. But she, so we just need to video your mom and I doing we, wacky. I mean, things. honestly, you all could make a lot of money. I think you two just all being right. cutesy on the internet. I think We're that that's cutesy. just a fact. Okay, all right. Anyhow, um, go ahead. But Pookie just had her baby. A little Pookette has been born into the world. And Pookie and Jet How is have, this their, news? have their baby because How Pookie and Jet news? because Pookie and Jet have their baby dad. Oh my gosh, this sounds like a like a terrible Disney film that just <laughs> happened. Her name's not Pookie. Her name is Campbell. All right, well, but Campbell and Jet. Then. Congratulations, Pookie. Oh my gosh. Well, <laughs> this is so then. Why am I even going to tell my next part of my my news is like <laughs> legitimately real? My news is legitimately real. Okay. So the the some girl named Pook had a baby on a jet. <laughs> I don't know, but the, the ruby Pookie. slippers from the Wizard of Oz sold for eight hundred thousand dollars. Woo! If you had eight hundred thousand dollars, Hannah, what nerd thing would you buy? Um. A house to live in and no student loans. That's not a nerd thing. Unless you had like a... And well, unless I, it's like shaped like a giant ruby slipper. It's it's a, it's a hobbit hole house. <laughs> a hobbit hole house. <laughs> no, let, oh, me, let me think about it. If I had right. $800,000... Anyway. ...to spend on a nerd thing, what would I buy... Because I guarantee, I, buy, I guarantee whoever bought this, they already got seventeen houses. Well, they could buy me a house. 
There you go. <laughs> All right, Hannah. Please. Um, We're talking to the GoFundMe house for Hannah. <laughs> GoFundMe, please. <laughs> we do not have For student loans. No, I'm just kidding. In my house, I'm not kidding. We get enough I'm kidding. sponsorship from the seven H. HBO execs. The six HBO execs, Dad. Six. You added well, one more, one joint. You they added had to, one they had to, joint. they expanded. One joint. Uh, um, anyway, that's okay, just a okay, lot. no, no, no. I would, I think a really sick lightsaber could be cool. I do think like a Hobbit whole house would Wait, be cute. I think a lightsaber would cost eight hundred thousand no, dollars. I'm just listing things I could buy. With Listen, our friend Ron dollars. in the chat says he'll dig you a hole for eight hundred thousand dollars. Well, hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, there's a lot of things to do. That's a lot of money. What would you do? Um, what would you buy? I would um, buy something to, and I, of course, I'd get all the cool comics mm. and then buy something to store them in nicely, mm. like a big house. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do it. Sir. Anyway, that's all the news I got. Sir. What? Hey, I agree with you. That would be a great thing. That's to do. what I would like. I would buy a house. And then I'd pay off my student loans. And mm-hmm. then I would put nerd things in the house that there I just go. bought myself. It would be in, there you go. Absolutely. It'd be a nerd house. All right. Well, listen, nerd house. What are you binging right now? Um, we watched. Are you ready? I am. I'm ready. Fellowship. Uh, I did get a video from, uh, from Trev. Trevin about that, watching the fellowship. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. But the fir- I just wept through the first 15 minutes of the film when the hobbits are just going about living their life and Bilbo's doing the voiceover about concerning hobbits. I literally just, like, cried. I, and I don't know why. I've never just, like, cried at the beginning of the, of the Lord of the Rings. But it just was something about it was just extra tender to but me. there's some good in the world, Mr. Frodo. Oh, I just... And it's worth fighting for. Just the simple life that they all have, and they're all, like, hanging out, and the babies are running around, and that See, the grandpa that is just, like, making up face yeah, and then he's he sees the fireworks and he's like oh that was fun no wait i'm mad again because my wife is here and she's chastising me um, yes the horn blowers are the ones that make all the good pipe weed it had me crying in the club and okay. then boromir <laughs> boromir always has me pierced with many arrows pierced with many arrows boromir i would have uh, uh uh, when he's I, did, like, I tried to take ones. him, I tried to take it from him. Uh, and he's like, "You are stronger than me." And he's like, "The the first thing that he says to Aragon is, where are the little ones?'" Because mm-hmm. he loves Merry and Pippin. And I just, man, it gives me big, big, the the thief on the cross energy mm. when Boromir oh, being passes redeemed away. when he passes away. I get that. That makes sense. Yeah. And I just, oh, I could cry about it right now. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'll cry later when we talk well, about I'd, a comic book. But, mm-hmm. uh, Boromir. <laughs> um, I also watched a TV show that is called The Show That Goes Wrong. Have you heard of this? No. Okay, so this is a, it's a British play series. And what they do is they put on a play. Um, where, do you, the, where do you watch it? It's on, it's on Prime or Hulu or something like that. Okay, gotcha. Um, it's called The Play That Goes Wrong. Um, oh, and, wait a minute. Is this the one that's hilarious? Yes. I've and caught bits and pieces of this. It's I didn't hysterical. know it was a show. It's a show. It's a TV show. They have like all of these different like one act plays that you can watch. Oh my gosh, I've got to watch it. Different things go wrong. And They're hilarious. It's just going the clips wrong I've watched. One after another. The one that we watched was this man who's, it's like the lodge. And they go to this lodge and it's haunted. <laughs> oh, gosh. And this, this man, he's supposed to be this old man. He he does this like creepy laugh. He's like, ha 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 ha. He's just like laughing and mm-hmm. like trying to like exit the stage, but he can't exit the stage. And he's supposed to not be able to walk. And so he sits on one of those things that like pulls you up the stairs. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. It wouldn't start. And then he was just like laughing hysterically and it wouldn't and go up. It wouldn't and go he, up. That's and then funny. finally he's like, I'll just walk up the stairs. He walks up the stairs, tries to get into the attic, can't. Because it's been boarded up and he's just still maniacally laughing, walks down the stairs, tries to go out another place, can't. That's funny. I have to watch this. So, 
Oh man. I didn't know it was available. Revenant I didn't know it was a show. Yeah. I thought it was like live. We think Nathan would be so good. Oh, with that. At that. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that, sure. It was hysterical. Hmm. It was so, so funny. So we watched okay. um Fellowship, um, L O T R. We watched the, the show that goes wrong or the play that goes wrong. I can't remember. I'll Google it and write the right thing in. Um okay. And um, I watched some football, I guess. Oh, yeah, me too. His team keeps winning. They should be losing, and they're winning. He has not washed his jersey. That's gross. Well, he wears an undershirt under it. He always wears a red long sleeve undershirt, but he has not washed it. It's going to get worms. And it's got, it's going to get worms. It's got like some stains on it. That's nasty. It's gross. It's just got like some speckles right here. And I'm like, oh, can I, can I, do you want me to wash that? I'll spot clean it for you. He goes, it's not getting washed until they lose. That's hilarious. Okay. I'm like, okay. (laughs) I finished the penguin. Finished, finished. Finished, finished. What'd you think? Um, the end, this show is very adult and it is, um, the end was very, um, you, you sort of knew it would end, how it would end with the penguin coming on top. And I felt that I knew what was going to happen to the main villainess. I figured that his right hand man wasn't going to make it. So I wasn't surprised when what happens happens. I don't want to spoil mm. it for everybody. But at the very, very end, it got creepy weird in that <clears throat> the penguin ain't there. He's – we. I knew he was, like, psychotic, like he would kill somebody for anything, but he's Not messed well. up. And at the like very worse end – Worse than Kingpin? Um. Well, like, he's got some mama issues for darn sure. And um, she's like, this. I don't want to spoil it, but something is said at the end that there's nobody standing in your way. And at the end, the movie ends and it pans out. You see him in this top of this penthouse type thing. And it pans out and you see the skyline and then you see the bat symbol. Oh, sick. Yeah. Um, so Colin Farrell is signed on to do two more Batman movies. I, there, as of right now, there are not, not plans to mm-hmm. do another season of this show. Um, but, uh, it was intense. Um, very intense. Um, so yeah. I, Did you I, enjoy it, it? Yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah. His acting is amazing. Yeah. The acting in it is amazing. Um, I also went ahead and finished Agatha. What did you think? I didn't like it. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Um, I get it. it I, I, they were just, I think they use this as a vehicle to introduce Wiccan, the son. And so yeah. now Agatha is like a ghost, but she's still there. And they're going to find his brother. And mm. I don't know. It's just weird. I... <clears throat> I enjoy, I don't enjoy like strictly witchy things. Mm -hmm. I need it to be like a part of like a magical world for it to be something I enjoy. I get that. Um, Um, So I am, I don't, I'm never going to watch that show. Yeah, it it wasn't great. I mean, I don't know. Like I didn't watch, I watched like a couple episodes of Sabrina and then I couldn't. Yeah, it's nothing like WandaVision. WandaVision was really cool, Um, but anywho. Mm -hmm. um, I'd finished it just because I'd only had two episodes. You'd already started it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I am uh, in the middle listening to Lord of the Rings Two Towers. Ew. Let me tell you what. I'd forgot. I'd read these books before, but I'd forgotten so much stuff. So much. Yeah. Like, even in the fellowship, the books, you should go back and listen to them. There's so much that you didn't know. And it made me think, because you know how I don't like the Hobbit movies? Yeah. Because I love the Hobbit book. Yeah. I think if I had was such a fan of the fellowship books, I don't know if I'd have liked the fellowship movies. Mm. But there's no way in the world they could have put all this in the movie. I, I think mean, that, yeah. 
This book, Two Towers, is 16 hours long. The movie is four. Well, it's because we watched the extended version, which any real human should do. Shouldn't watch the garb that's not. But the, my favorite scene came on, and Trevor went, your favorite scene? And I said, yes. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I'm seen. Yeah. Do you know it wasn't the hobbits that threw the stone into the lake with the creature? Who was it? It was Boromir. Boromir. How mm-hmm. dare he? He on, honestly, Boromir. Yeah. So, and so I am like halfway into the book of the two towers. N- no Sam and Frodo yet. This has been straight up them trying to. Tracking the two little ones. Well, they've Sam, already done it. Mary yeah. and Pippin. Mary and Pippin. And the tree beard interaction is great. Mm. In this, in the book, so much better than in the, in the movie, and like stuff didn't happen. They didn't have to convince them to go to war. The ants decided on their own. Yeah. Um, but anywho, yeah. Um, and I'm watching the movies. Classic. I'm now on Return of the King. Is that what I'm on? I want. Yes. I'm gonna add that. I'm gonna put that on my Christmas list. There is a mug that I want, and it's Aowen's helmet. Mm-hmm. And underneath it, it says, I am no man. And that's okay. all what the mug so, is. One of my favorite things, and I'd remembered this from the book when I'd read it before, is that, so Aomer, which is Aowen's cousin, mm-hmm. right? Who, that's whose bones. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, who, by the way, wasn't sent away by Theoden in the book. He was there with him the entire time. Mm. So Drama. Um, yeah. So, and it was a better, it was a better movie. I get it. So when he meets Gimli, Legolas, and Aragorn on the Riddamark, and he goes, Where's you tell me your name, Horse Master, and I'll tell you yours, mine. or I'll tell you mine, or whatever. I knew you meant. You know, you know what I meant. Um, they ask him where they came from, and they said they came from Lothlorien. Yes, and he likes well, Arwen. Here's the deal. So... Apparently, they're all scared to death of Lothlorien. All of the of Galadriel. They're like, you can't. No one can go into there. And right, I mentioned this before. How Gimli thinks she's the most beautiful thing, and he basically threatens to beat the snot out of Aramir if he talks ill about her. And um, at the end of the Return of the King, yeah, we talked about this. Yeah, he said he thinks that Arwen is the most beautiful thing in the world, and. They come to an agreement to disagree, but anywho. We love. So, I, Eowyn is, I'm doing. Eowyn is so cool. Girly Pop okay. can't cook, but no. she can slay an Asgul. Nasty soup. That's gross. <laughs> Girly Pop, sort of Girly Pop can't cook, but she can slay. Oh, <laughs> another interesting thing in the, in the two towers. Um, so Gimli, you know how they all go into the caves at Helm's Deep? Yes, and he blows the horn. Well, he doesn't really blow the horn, but he is in the caves. So he falls in loves with those caves. He, they're then called the glittering caves. He thinks they're the most beautiful caves he's ever seen in Middle Earth, ever. And wants to come back and work on those caves just to make them more beautiful. Not to add things to it, because it doesn't need to be. So Legolas wants to explore Fangon Forest because it's so old and so... So, um, at the, at the end of their meeting with Treebeard, uh, Legolas and, well, Legolas and Gimli make a deal. If they survive all of this, Legolas will go with him to the glittering caves and he'll show them, explore them. And then he will go with Legolas to Fangorn Forest. So tree, so Legolas tells Treebeard he can't wait to come, and, he, and, Le, and Treebeard's like, I would love for you to come into the forest. And he goes, yeah, I'm going to bring a friend. He goes, you and an, any elf would have a great, you know, and he says, oh, no, no, it's not an elf. And he's like, what? No, it's Gimli Gloin's son. And, um, and uh, Treebeard's like, oh, no, we don't want an axe welder. In the forest. You know, in the forest. And uh, Legolas goes, his, this axe is not for trees. This is for hewing heads off orcs. Matter of <laughs> fact, he just killed 42 of them. You know how they kept score? Yeah, they keep count. <laughs> yes. Just 
And yes. he's like, oh, Master Dwarf, you are just, I would love for you to come, blah, blah, blah. It's really cool. <laughs> That's Anywho. so cute. Yeah. Aww. All right. That was it. Good, 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 good. I love we the love. Gimli. It's Lord of the Legolas. Rings season. Oh, oh. And. What? And what? I watched Twilight New Moon with I my know, dear sweet God. roommate. I was trying to get out of this without you even mentioning a freaking <laughs> vampire movie. And vampire I couldn't movie. It's terrible. Vampire All right. Movie. Good for you. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. All right. Hannah, tell everybody what's next. Dad is going to share his pull list with us. For those of you who don't know what that is, a pull list is a list of comic books that you give to the proprietor of your local comic book shop. And what they do is they pull from their inventory. Ha, huh? see, get it? Um, the things that you're reading and collecting. That way you can ensure that you get all of the books that you need um, for the different things that you're reading. So dad is going to share with us five books. He's going to share with us one of the big two, a Marvel book and a DC book. He's going to share with us also um, a book from an independent um, like mm -hmm. Image, Dark Horse, IDW, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Boom Studios. You've done Boom Studios in a minute. Um, and then he's going to share with us a new number one. That way, if you wanted to start collecting comic books, you could go to your local comic book shop and request this first book um, and go from there. And he also is going to share with us a book of the week, which is his so, most favorite book. cool thing about this week. week is that they're all jumping on points. Oh, we love that. So if anyone wants to start collecting at this point, it'd be a good time to hop in. Um, so my first one is going to be my independent. It's from Dynamite Comics. TNT. Dynamite. Dynamite. And this is an issue one. Um, it is DuckTales. 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 Doo -doo. Um, and it's basically DuckTales. Classic. That's it. Is it Huey, Dewey, and Louie? And Scrooge McDuck. Let's and go. It's basically an intro story um, to say this is what we're going to do, and we're going to explore all of Duckburg, and we're going to have all of the characters show up in it. Um, so, yeah, it's a fun book. It's an all-ages book. The art is cute. I enjoyed it. Um, will I keep getting it? I don't know. I might pick it up and flip through it, and if I like it, I'll, I'll get it. But now, it's not as good as the Donald Duck book, the Infinity Dime that I mm. got. And I'm, I'm going to go with that. That was way awesome. But it's still a fun little start. So, if, you know, especially if fun. you have... Yeah. Kiddos. There you go. Um, we, we Nugs. We Nugs. Well, this is a, a We Nug book, too, I think. Even though it's like a... It's not rated that. It's rated ages 13 plus. It's a DC book. It's called Little Batman. So I didn't know this, but in 2023, there was Little Mary Batman, which was the art style was like Damian Wayne as Batman being taught by his dad. And they, um, it was Christmas shenanigans. So this is, this is a spoof off of Batman year one, which was a, 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 a series inside of the original Batman title that came out in the late eighties. Um, by Frank Miller. It was awesome. I have it. Yeah. Anywho, this is called Little Batman Month One. Look at the art for people. <gasps> He's so cute. So it's little cutesy. It's Damian Wayne. Um, he has to sit at the kids' table at this uh, at this charity function. Scarecrow pops in. Um, and uh, Bruce turns himself in. There's It's very young feeling. There's nothing that I would say in this story that would be, I think, scary or, or bothersome to, to young kids. Um, so I don't know why it's 13 plus, but uh, it's a good jumping on point. I think, I mean, if, if you're a parent, get it and read it. And Hannah's show me Merry Little Batman picture. The art is great in it. Oh, it's so um, fun. It's a fun book. Just Damian Wayne being Damian, but not as much as a turd. More of like an annoyed. We love kid. that. We love him not being a turd because he's, he's a, a turd. turd. He is a he is a turd, but he's not a bad turd. So, yeah. So that's another jumping on point. My next one is my Marvel book. It is called. It's the Avengers issue twenty. Okay. So the Avengers have taken over. It's called the Impossible City. It's basically. It's like Fancy a, New York. No, it's a spaceship that's a city okay. that's living. And um, the people who were in it before were all villains. And they like, of course, they tried to take over the Earth and the Avengers beat them up. And um, How dare. So they find out that those 
bad guys had created their own little prison. And they send the Black Panther into this prison to, like, f- form a prison break, to get them out of the prison. But when he gets in there, there's, like, their whole other world inside this prison. Um, it's very much like... Um, like Oh, it's hard to explain, but there's factions within it. It's a just basically a whole other world. And he, cool. who has was king, is now taking over kingship to try to bring them back into rule under rule. So mm. I don't know how long Black Panther's going to be there, or if prison he ends break. up being the king of this prison. Classic, it's a pretty interesting story, and it's setting up for something that's going to happen in the future. I got a feeling. Um, so my new number one Woo! is a DC book, JSA, which Justice stands for Society of Supper. America. Society Yummy. of America. So the JSA used to be the old school team that was created ages ago. I was going to say, it's not the JLA. No, they were after the JSA. So the JSA is the, the old guard. So it's got an old guard feel to it. Okay. But the Is writer. The art got an old no, feel to it? No, art's good. Art's okay. really, it's, it's cool. Um, and it's got a mixture of old characters and new characters in it. And, you know, you would think like the characters in the Stargirl TV show would be a part of this, but it's like, um, the cool thing is this is written by Jeff Lemire, the guy who created and did Sweet Tooth. Oh. So he is writing the story. And it starts out with basically the JSA on a mission. And um, you come to find out that at the end that there's a villain group that's being created as well. And it's called the Injustice Society. So we're going to get to, well, the funny thing is. Always. Yeah, yeah. You got to have a, you got to have the bad guys, right? So it's fun. It's going to be, I think, an old school vibe with good writing. You um, love an old school vibe, though. I did. There were a bunch of number ones, but this was, I mean, there was absolute Superman came out number one, but I mean, it was all right, but I liked the JSA book better. There was love some it. other stuff. Yeah. Um, my book of the week. Book of the week. It's the book of the week. This actually came out a week ago, but I didn't get it. I didn't get it until this week. We love. This is We amazing. make up the rules, Dad. This is Detective Comics issue 1090. Okay. One, zero, a thousand ninety. Yes. New creative team. The writer is Tom Taylor, the guy who just left Nightwing. Yes. And I love Tom Taylor stuff. He did the zombie, DC zombies, remember? Yes. We read all of those. Yes. Um, here's the deal. Batman... Um. There is a new villain that is killing people, killing yeah. villains, killing bad guys. But they're not really, you know, I wouldn't, you know, are they bad guys? Like one kid was holding up a store, accidentally shot Aww. someone. He didn't even think the gun was loaded. He actually was calling 911 when Batman shows up and he takes off. And that, then this other, this other person kills them because mm-hmm. they're a villain. Mm. And <clears throat> we don't know who it is, although we get some hint. Superman. Because we get we get a flashback to Clark's mom and dad. Uh oh. Do you remember what his dad was? What profession his dad was? He's a farmer. No, that's Superman's dad was oh. a farmer. He was a doctor. Doctor <laughs> Wayne. Sorry, I'm sorry. So, I said Superman because I was like, it's Superman. And then I got stuck on that train of thought. So Trigger warning, trigger warning, trigger warning. A woman and man come into the hospital oh, after a bad... having fertility af- problems? No, 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 no. After a bad car wreck. Oh, no. Bad car wreck. And Thomas Wayne is like literally sleeping because he's trying to get some sleep in because he's on call. He's on call at the hospital. Mm. One of the doctors comes and gets him and says there's been a terrible wreck. This guy, we don't think is going to make it. And he goes, well, I have to prep. And he goes, I think you should go see the wife before you decide to go operate on the guy. 
And he goes and he can tell that the woman's been beaten. Mm. And she's pregnant. <clears throat> so they're like, um, he goes, if you weren't here, he wouldn't make it. Just letting you know. And he goes, well, I took an oath. I can't do that. And we'll, we'll pretend this never conversation never happened. So he saves the guy's life. While that's going on, the woman has labor and has a baby. So he goes to check on the lady and the baby. And she's like, you saved him? Yeah, I had to. It's my job. You took an oath? Yeah, I took an, I mean, you know. And um, she goes, well, then he can't know that this baby is here. So his Batman's mom like helps with shelters and adoptions and gets the woman and the, and the child to, to a, know, like a shelter mm. to get away from the guy. So the guy then is like, he's going psycho and I got to get out of here and I'm going to find these people or whatever. And they're like, well, we, Thomas Wayne's like, well, you can't hold him. I mean, we can't hold him against his will. If so, let's discharge Joe Chill, which is the guy who kills Batman's mom and dad. Aww. So we're getting some setup, and the daughter now re-enters all grown up, and she's like running this. She used to work for Wayne Tech, so he, she's friends with Bruce, this girl who's now all grown up, who's named after Bruce's mom, and she's got some type of genetic thing that makes people younger or stops aging or stronger and yeah so and um oh, pretty no. much this is what happens in this book we're setting this up is she the villain is, is the it? mom the villain what's going on who's creating what why is this happening um but i uh, added detective comics back to my pull list hey that's fun i know all right, that's it. Yes. Hannah and I read a, I think this was 2023. I'll Google it. Or 2022 um, miniseries, an eight issue miniseries called Eight Billion Genies. And the premise of Eight Billion Genies is it's 2022. That 2022. Um, what happens in. 8 billion genies is once the earth population reaches 8 billion, 8 billion, everyone on the planet gets a genie, even in utero. So you're waiting for your genie. You're waiting for your genie and everyone on the planet gets one wish. That's it. Hmm. And this series like the first book is like the first eight minutes and then the n- first eight hours and the first, first eight, eight days. days first eight weeks first eight years first eight centuries it does go eight centuries yeah so 800 years um and what happens within it mm. uh hannah yes tell me about the book this book is so good. Um, it's a different level than what we read with the Murder Falcon. Different, now. yeah, different level of good. There's a lot more gore in this one, and it's much more about. It's not just about like one person's journey. Um, there's a person that's clearly the like narrator or like the touchstone of the yeah. book, and that's the bar owner. Of so what the, happens? At, yeah. So what happens with this is as soon as this happens. There's a there's a bar called the Lampwick, and there are people in this bar or around the bar who are there on purpose, on accident, getting ready to perform a band. Um, two people wander in on accident. Um, a, yeah, a Chinese couple wander yeah. in on accident. Uh-huh. And so and this man, the bar, the bar owner, owner, immediately wishes, immediately. What's he wish, Hannah? He wishes that nothing that anyone wishes outside of this outside of this facility will have any impact on the building or anyone inside of it 
Uh, it happens in his building. Yeah. Yes. So it becomes a haven, basically. Which is the term for safe places. Yes. That are not impacted by wishes. Yeah, because, I mean, they've got the internet and everything still in there. Mm-hmm. Electric, water, everything works just like it was normal. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it gets crazy. Ooh. And it's so, like, you like see, like, there's like two, there's like three pages of panels of people just like wishing things and people being like, oh no, like this person wishes for like her parents to disappear and they just Yeah, poof. I hope you... And they're gone. Yeah, and they're gone. Um, Mm -hmm. Another dad. Oh, this was, I was like, shoot, dang. Um, The genies, the genies pop, like, pop up, and this mom and dad are sitting downstairs. And the the genie is like, yes, every person in the world has just received a genie. And he's like, every person? And they, they, like, mom and dad look at each other, and they, like, run upstairs. And the dad uses his, What? That that is how that one place becomes. That's, that's the start how that, of that one, one yeah. place. Which is what I figured. Like the he dad makes a wish that he his his children, his children cannot make a wish unless he approves it's, of it. Right. And another thing that the genies do is they sort of grant can, the wish. They pick and depending choose. upon the heart of the person wishing. Mm-hmm. So it's not necessarily monkey paw, although sometimes it is. Mm-hmm. But if a person is genuinely has a like, like I think that that sweet, dad had a genuine desire to protect his children. Yes, right. and that later on in the series, the, the, the like, Jenny's like, I don't think they're going to like this. <laughs> You're going to have fun with this later down the road. Yeah, but, and I, I, so I do think that he had a genuine, which is I think he had a genuine desire to protect his children, but it became kind of icky towards the end of the book. So the first wish that we get to at the other than oh man other than the guy is a, a woman outside who's part of this band and she wishes for the other bandmate to, love to fall her. in love with her. However, he was inside the building, and so the so wish she doesn't... wastes her wish. Yeah, yikes! And it causes a lot of tension there for a while. A long time, yeah. So there's a, the people, okay, the people in the building. The people in the building. We got three bandmates. Yeah, two, two boys guys and, and a girl. The, two boys and a girl. And I believe the one uh, guy is gay, if I'm not mistaken. Sure. Yeah. Um, we have. Um, the one that she wanted her to fall in love with. Oh, is that who it was? Yes. Oh, I, did, uh-huh. I did not catch that. I was reading too quick. Yeah. Um, we have a young boy. And his and dad, his dad. Who's obviously an drowning his sorrows. Yeah, in alcohol, because um, mm-hmm. his wife has passed away. We have um, a, a Chinese bartender. couple, uh-huh, a man and a woman who a are there, and lost and can't speak any. Who lost English. and can't speak any English? They are trying to get across town to a different tavern. They're in the wrong place, and they're she is pregnant. Tavern, and she's pregnant. Mm-hmm. And then the gene, and then the all of their genies, and the guy. Yeah, and the yeah bartender who, guy, bartender, the bartender man guy. Mm-hmm. Um, we get another key player in there because the dad wishes for his wife to be his back to, to back be alive, back. and you come to find out that you can do that, and people they become remnants until the person who makes the wish passes away, passes, and then that wish is gone. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, there's a lot of stories that interweave here. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of it is in this part is people wanting to protect their family. That's yeah. It's people. And it's not just, it's people protecting their like birth family, but also people protecting their chosen family. Yes. Because the three bandmates too. Yeah. The three bandmates become a family. Mm-hmm. Um, I think my, uh, I don't know if it, I would call it my favorite because they're all, all of the storylines are so good and they interweave in such a beautiful way. Um, the um the little boy yeah the little boy named Robbie the little boy named Robbie um becomes a superhero because mm-hmm. he wants to protect his mom and dad he wants to go find a place for his mom where, and dad where they to can live. be safe and outside is so crazy because of the wackadoodle wishes that people are making like I wish I had a dragon or I wish the world was on fire or <laughs> 
you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and, but he gets used. He does. The idea man gets him. There is a m- guy who was not a very good person in real life, wishes that people would believe in him. Yeah. So he basically has, you know, sway over so many Everyone, people. Everyone, he, he asks them, do you believe me? And, and, and like, he yeah. and he wants to be in charge However, of everyone. That doesn't work on remnants. Nope. Because they're not people. Yeah. And so exactly. Robbie and his dad and Julie. His mom. Yeah. Go to live with um, the... Idea man. Yeah. And his people. And Julie's like, this ain't safe, boyo. Yeah, this guy's wrong. Um, and sweet Robbie is... He is 12 when he runs into this person. And man, yeah. how... How gullible were we? Not just that, but the things that he had to do, like he killed people on accident, yeah. didn't mean to, and then he would be, he became just a... Yeah. This a like super, hired, hired gun. Hired gun man. is basically what he became for this man. The thing that... Oof. Mm-hmm. The thing that... Okay. I'm going to jump way forward. That's okay. The thing that killed me about, the in, about Robbie's end was him being like, I have followed you for so long and have done so many things. I don't believe in anything anymore. Yeah, but he then sets up a better place. Yeah, he Did does. He that? he decides to protect all of the children of the place that had exploded, where right. that couple lived. Right. With what? What she change her name to? Like Betty or Betty? Betty, Betty or yeah, Betsy or something like that. This was the child. So of the Chinese the, couple. The Chinese I don't remember couple. any of their names. I'm so sorry. I don't either. But they ended up having a child, and they take her to live in the place where the kids can't use their wishes. Wishes without the parents' approval. So the kids basically say, we're leaving. Yeah. And they left. Because it was supposed to be when they come of age 25. And they're like, ah, it used to be in America that you could vote when you were 18. (laughs) Yeah. And then they're like, "Uh, no, even not 25. We need to save you. Because what happens is wishes become valuable. And it becomes currency. Yes. And people will manipulate you. And will mm-hmm. and will hurt you, and will go against you. The cool thing about the book is that, like at the beginning of book one, it said eight thousand human population, eight billion. Genie, Genie population, population, eight billion. And then, like the next book, it would say human population four million seven hundred and thirty-two. Genie population two billion something. And then it keeps getting lower and lower and lower mm-hmm. and lower and lower. Um, and I also, I'm sorry, Dad. No, it's okay. Go ahead. I also really liked the story of the of the three bandmates, and yes. they um, they learn to um, to really value each other. Mm-hmm. Um, the two the two men in the band um, they keep they, their wishes for a long they long keep time. their wishes for a very long time, and then they go audition at this place called Fun City, and you only are allowed allowed to audition to Fun City once, um, mm. and they weren't going to be let in. And then the girl was like, wait, they both have their wishes. And they're like, oh, we'll take them, but you can't come. And then one of the guys, the guy who she had wished would love, would love her, Mm -hmm. which I just think that that's so tender that the man that she wished would love her. um, He wishes that. Wishes that. The other guy's genie. Would only answer to all three of them, and they all had to agree on the wish together. Unless, and, it, and if one person passes, it goes to those two. And, and if, if that person passes, that wish stays with that one person. And they're like, the, the genie's like, that's a great wish. Oof. That's something else that I think is so sweet is that these genies truly want people to make good wishes, to make good wishes. And like so, to like, be like, I don't think that's a good, well, you're not gonna like I this. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay, um, but this ain't good. And the thing that I, yeah, like when the father had wished for his wife to come back, yeah, for him and his son, all his of genie the genies like, in the bar were clapped. Clapped. Yes. Yeah. They were like, yes. This, this is, is great. a great wish. Yes. Yeah. Which, ah, uh, ah. Uh. So this was supposed to, uh, is this going to be a TV show? I hope so. So here's the deal. I read. That it Seth Rogen was developing in it for Amazon. Okay. I love the genies. The genies look like the people. They like I noticed that too. That the genies look like the little 
the people that they're supposed to be. Yeah, they're not like blue genies like you would see, not like Aladdin genies. They're like cosmic. They're like little itty bitty characters. But that what like you, float around. What you come to find out is that every time a population reaches a certain point. Eight billion. All these genies show up to try to reset the population to get it back. And what happens is there eventually becomes one person that only, there's only one person left that that has a wish and they get to make the final wish. And ultimately the person who makes the final wish gets to make the world whatever they want. Whatever they want. And at the end of this book, it came down to the the girl who wasted her wish on love, what she thought was love. And the daughter, Betty. Who had not been allowed to use her wish. No. But then whose whose parents wishes both were to protect her. Yes, that was even the one even before she was born. Mm-hmm. Um, and Betty's Betty's wish is I wish I didn't have this wish. Uh and it was funny because they're sitting at this bar and they're like, you know, we're probably going to die after we do these. He goes, I've seen enough. I'm old, 800 years old. And they both have lived. They both accidentally ended up with immortality yes. based on like curveballs in their wishes. Yes, in their wishes. Is that not crazy? In their That's wishes. Funny. Um, so the final wish is given to the girl who screwed who it up. Blew, and, who blew her first And her wish. wish was, I wish that everyone in the world could love the way they want to be loved. Mm. And she even mentioned and before goes, she made her wish. wish. Yeah. Um, I know that you like to her genius yes, said, take, yes, like you are my you are my best friend. You You've have been, been with forever. me. You know my heart. All of these things. You know my heart. You know the posture I have when I make this choice. Yes. Which, Which I thought cool. was very gentle. Mm-hmm. You come to find out that the guy at the bar is really a genie. Ew. What happens is the last genie wish, the last genie who gets to grant a wish, be, gets to live in that next society as one of them. And at one point, you get to see how he lived his life. Yeah. And um, and how he was like, oh, and... Um, He's like, I came he, down as a baby, but I didn't like that. <laughs> No, he tried like, everything. I wanted to Trust do me. things. Yeah, and um, so do you think this would make a good TV show? I think, I honestly think it would make a good TV show. I think it's interesting enough that they could kind of use the three core stories and kind of interweave them in different ways and like add their own like little. Yeah. Idiosyncrasies and it like be interesting. I think that if they do this, it would be really cool. I wouldn't want it to be live action. I would want it to be animated. And I want oh, really? I would want them to have two animation styles. I would want there to be an animation style for all of the people and then a different Points. animation style for the genies. Oh, okay. I see that. Hmm. I wonder if it's if it's I don't know. I wonder what they're going with on it. Would, would you want it to be live action or would you want it to be animated? I would love to see it live action, but I think it would cost a fortune to make. Yeah. I mean, all the stuff that happens in it, there's no way you could do it. Yeah. I, I don't know that I would watch it if it's animated. I mean, I haven't watched Invincible and I think it's probably one of the best comic books ever written. Because so, it's a cartoon or just because you don't want to watch it? Yeah, probably because it's a cartoon, maybe okay. animated. I don't know. Well, I really like, but I didn't watch the boys either. Everybody says it's, but that's that has nothing to do with I that. Can, has to do with that. I I'm can't. Not, I can't watch yeah, it. I can't watch the boys. That's why I can't it's watch just, it. It's just not for me, which is fine, but it's too much for me. I got triggered yeah, <laughs> watching <you> it. Yeah. <laughs> so watch that with. Wellness in your heart. Um, I can't. I can't I, I, I'm, I'm looking at the Reddit thread, and this one person said, "I hope it's animated and not live action." And then someone wrote, "If it is live action, I better not see Will Smith play all the genies." Oh, that would be that's terrible. That's, that's a good joke. Though. Awful. No, but uh, if it is live action, the genies would have to be. They would be ethereal anyway. They wouldn't be. I would want them. I think to be like they look so cute the way they are. <laughs> I mean, really good. 
The art style is great. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I would watch it. I think it would be a really good, like, a brief. I, I would not want it to be seasons on seasons on seasons. I think it could be, like, a good, ooh, you know what it would be? Just let it be Gravity Falls. Let it be a two-season, 22-episode show. Oh. And let it be well, a cartoon. It'll be, it'll be a mature it won't be kids can't watch it. No, I know, but that's what I'm saying. Like, let it be like ten to twelve well, it, episodes, two seasons. Yeah, I get it. It doesn't All need right. to be anything wild. I don't know. I don't know either. It seems I'd rather I'd rather see a murder falcon show. Uh, That'd be awesome. I'd weep. Yeah, I'd weep about a murder right. falcon. Ugh. Hey, what are we going to do next week? We got one, and then we'll have to take a break because it'll be Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. I, I thought do we we already talked about the greatest Thanksgiving movie ever made, so I didn't. Paul Blart Mall Cop. Yeah, it's the greatest Thanksgiving movie ever made. Trevin would. Uh, I just hear Trevin's ethereal presence from Nashville, Tennessee. Planes, trains, and automobiles is better, Hannah. No, no, no thanks. I like it. Don't get me wrong. It's no Paul Blart Mall Cop. No, it's not Paul Blart Mall Cop. Yeah, I <laughs> forgot about. Plain strange and automobiles being Thanksgiving. But anyway, there you go, guys. 101. Woo! Thanks for hanging out with us. Hey, so how many genies would you give this out of five? Um, I don't think anyone needs that much power. Okay. Um, so I would say um five out of five. Um, um, bum, 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 bananas. Five out of five bananas? I don't know. I, I just am it, remembering at the very end of the book, someone turned themselves into an immortal it, banana. Oh, yeah. I'm going to give it five out of five preppers. Preppers. You and your prepper stash. I know. I, I thought about that. I've thought about that. If I could make that wish, I don't have enough food here for everybody. That would be <laughs> bad. You know. But I would probably. Well, I, I wonder, does it just auto populate? You know, I'm thinking, like, how much. I don't want to think I could eat ginger. But does it auto populate? No, I don't think it does. He had everything he needed down there in the basement. You know, food. He was in and that everything. basement for 800 years. That's true, too. So, but at a, at a, eventually they walked outside at a certain point. Yeah, right? you're right. He so. opened the door and went, took him long enough. That was funny. Yeah, to get stuff done. <laughs> yes, that was funny. That was funny. Yeah. Because they would open the door, folks, and they would look at what's going on outside, and, and be, like, be like, "Uh, uh-uh. uh, stay in, <laughs> close the stay door inside. again, close and the so door." And so, like, the world was wrecked, and then someone took a very, very long wish and like written in like legalese protocols, yes. mm-hmm. and like made the world back again. And he opened the door and went, "Took him long enough." Yeah, that was funny. Like, yeah, like he knew that was going to happen. All right, Hannah. Friends, thanks for hanging out with us on our little corner of the internet. Hey, our music is made by Brockwell Nason. You could check him out. His debut album is out anywhere you listen to music. Um, our art was made by Nate Turner, my dear sweet brother. Thanks for doing that for us, bud. I edit and upload our podcast, and Dad takes care of our YouTube page. Oh, and shout out to Harvey Locust. Yeah? You, if you know, you know. I hate it when people say that. He's he posted about in another uh, Discord about he'd yeah. listen to us talk about something on the uh, our podcast about me making a nerd bet that uh, Dory was Gollum's grandma. So there we'll you go, see. Harv. We'll right see. You. Thank you for listening. Yes. Anywho, guys, friends, Romans, countrymen, <laughs> be thinking about what that one wish would be and don't squander it. Until nope. then, we will catch you on catch the flip. Bye, friends. Bye, guys.